Hi, welcome back. Please like, share, and subscribe, and consider donating so we can keep this content going. This module is a continuation of the philosophy and theories behind technical analysis. Last time we discussed random walk theory. Today we'll be talking about Dow theory, and we're going to do this in two uh, quick parts. So like I said, we're talking about Dow theory, not the Tao Te Ching. So what is Dow theory? Dow theory is a set of ideas that were written as editorials in the Wall Street Journal. Many of the foundational tenets of technical analysis come from this collection of editorials. So in July of 1884, Dow Jones and company published a average based on the closing prices of nine railroad stocks and two large manufacturing companies, believing these to be strong indicators of the overall health of the economy. This was the first stock market average produced, and its principles led to the creation of the other, other averages, such as the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. It later changed to include more stocks and rail companies to do better display market conditions. So there are six key tenets to Dow theory. And we'll be going over the first three in this video, the second three in the second video. The, so they are that averages discount everything. The market has three trends. Major trends have three phases. The averages must confirm each other. Volume must confirm the trend. And a trend is assumed to be in effect until a definite signal shows otherwise. This concept was touched on in the first video. It's that the average, which is the price, is set by the competition of market participants or the buyers and sellers. And that the price represents the combined knowledge the buyers and sellers have of the past, present, and potential future price. Therefore, the average discounts all possibilities that could happen to the market. Of course, it cannot foresee things like a pandemic, but by watching global trade volume and prices of goods, one could see that in many markets, prices were already declining in key sectors. Thus, the averages even discounted the pandemic ahead of time. The majority of market participants were too slow to react and didn't notice, but the inkling something was coming could be seen in the volume changes, price spreads, in instances of accumulation selling, where early informed buyers began selling. Accumulation will be discussed later in this video. Dow considered an uptrend to have the following characteristics. A rally high must close higher than the previous rally. The rally low must close higher than the previous rally low. And the opposite for a downward trend. He believed that trends can be characterized like water in the ocean. It ebbs and flows with tides, waves, and ripples. The primary trend is the overall tide. The secondary are the waves that make up the tide. And the minor trend is the ripples between the waves. So it doesn't matter. And you can, well, you can think about it as the tide comes in the water comes up on the beach and flows out with waves in between crashing up and down. But then each progressive tide or each progressive wave gets a little bit further up the beach and further up the beach and further up the beach. And there may be ripples in between that go a little bit lower and a little bit higher, but the overall tide is coming in. So you need to, you need to watch on a long timeline to see the primary trend a slightly shorter timeline to see the second and a very small timeline to see the minor. Dow did not consider the minor um, trend to be very important at all, just the primary. So as we stated before, he said that the trend can be noted when each closing price is higher than the last, with rally lows being higher than the previous lows. And remember, we talked about time scales before. A primary trend can last years, but according to Dow, was a trend lasting for more than three months. 
and it's what we would call a bull or a bear market. The secondary trend lasts three weeks to three months and can involve corrections between one third and two thirds of the last trend movement, frequently being around 50%. This was what he stated. The minor trends last less than three weeks. So we'll discuss this uh, idea further in the future. This is the foundation of Elliott Wave, um, one of the foundations of Elliott Wave theory, and we'll discuss this in the future. So a simple tool to use to see this trend is using moving averages. So you can set one line at 180 days on a daily chart, a second at 45 days, and a third at 11 days. And I made that on the bottom chart here, and you can see the primary, secondary, and minor trend going on in the silver market. So all of these things, the moving averages, when you're doing this yourself, you need to adjust it to suit your time scale and time frame to help with uh, your timing of entering the market. The next part's very important, and it's that market trends have three phases. Dow considered the most important trend to be the primary trend or the tides of the market. He believed that the primary trend consisted of accumulation phase, public participation phase, and distribution phase. The beginning phase consists of informed buyers, industry insiders, and those with large fundamental knowledge of a particular market. They see changes that are sure to cause gaze in the future, future and they purchase and they wait. The second phase is public participation phase. This is when news organizations begin to mention the commodity stock or security and post good news on it. You may see informed buyers or insiders come out and discuss the market and encourage public participation. The third phase is distribution. It's when you see the news blasting info about the uh, market and encouraging everyone to buy it. Speculators join in mass and there's an increase in public interest. This is when early on accumulators sell and collect their earnings. This often turns the market leading to a spiral of sell-offs. Those who join in the distribution phase sell at a loss and public participants often sell in order to not lose too much as well. The key is to watch volume and large sales. Prior to the sell-off in March 2020, there was a few market signs. Large stock sell-offs by CEOs of many companies, in addition to many CEOs quitting their organizations after selling their own stock. These are the informed buyers. Another example of this is people joining, of people joining during distribution is the silver panic, which ended April 2011. During this time, many news organizations posted increasingly bullish news on silver as it went higher and higher and higher daily. Encouraged people to buy despite the large spreads between the ask and bid price and extreme volatility. Bottom line, being aware of these three phases will help you immensely as a trader. So in the next part of the video, we will discuss the next three tenets of Dow theory. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment below your thoughts.